It's come time for the War Poet, the DR920 full size. And when you're reviewing something like the War Poet, you can't just use any regular old music for the range footage. Like I said, with something like the Warpoat, you can't just use any regular old range footage. So if you don't know, this is the DR920 full size in the War Poet edition or the Warrior Poet edition. And it's the big brother to the MR920, which is this guy right here. Now that MR920 belonged to a good friend of mine. Again, thank you for letting me borrow that. Absolutely loved the thing. And it prompted me to buy the full size version, the DR920. And I opted for the War Poet Edition because one, I like full size setups out there on the range. And two, I'm somewhat biased because this is John Lovell's gun. And he's another former Ranger that we were in the actual same unit just at different times, but I'm always willing to support anybody that had anything to do with regiment. And he absolutely did his homework because there is a lot of good stuff about this pistol and I might've broken it. So we're definitely gonna talk about that. So before we get into all that stuff, a huge shout out to one of the supporters of the channel that has been around for a long time. That is gonna be Hidden Hybrid Holsters. So Hidden Hybrid makes these kind of nice, sweet, semi-leather, semi-kydex holsters if you're into the leather game. You can do whatever you want with it. As you can see, this one has got my SIG M17 in it, and it's a nice, solid design. They've been a huge supporter of the channel and a huge thank you to them. So you can use this to gently caress your pistols or just rub that sweet suede backing right up and down your face to your heart's content. Go ahead and uh, check them out at the link in the description down below. Awesome people over there. Like I said, a huge supporter of the channel. Let's go ahead and get deep into the DR920. Talk about all of the good stuff going on here because this is how this thing comes minus the light, the optic and everything is included, which is absolutely outstanding. Of course, talk about that problem that I did run into out there, which led to a quality control customer service experience. And we'll talk more about that as well. All right, so let's get into the War Poet DR920. And like I said, this is the big brother of the MR920. This is the elite version. This is the peanut butter that made me jelly, that made me buy this one. This one's got to go home to its owner, my buddy Ryan. Let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to get with this thing in the box, and then we'll go over everything quick like so you guys can check it out. So you're going to get a cardboard box with a sticker in it. And you're going to get a nylon carrying case. In said carrying case, you're going to get Loctite. You're going to get your little plug for the magwell because the magwell didn't come on mine. You're going to get an O-ring for your uh, thread protector there. You'll get your plate. You'll get the screw for the hollow sun, your manual for the hollow sun, all that good stuff. All of your interchangeable back straps. There's a total of three, your little tool. Of course, your lock and your manual for the pistol itself. And you will get two magazines that are going to be the 17 round Magpul GL9 mags. Get the box out of the way. And we're gonna continue on 
with said war poet here. So right over here, I'm gonna list like the specs, the length, the width, all that good stuff. So you guys will have that to check out. And we are just going to start going over this pistol, what it comes with from magwell to muzzle, from the feeder to the spitter, as I like to say. So make sure you guys get subscribed. You know, turn those notifications on. If you guys like anything going on here, give the video a like and leave me a comment. Are you liking this thing or not? And if you don't, what would be your chosen pistol? So from the bottom to the top here, we get a factory magwell and it is slick. Okay, the way that this is designed is it fits in the base of the pistol grip right here. There's a pin that goes up inside there or like a little eyelet and then your pin right here goes right through it. So it's totally contained in there. Very cool design. The one thing I will say, it's a polymer magwell. I'm generally a fan of metal magwells over polymer because polymer, especially if you use the factory Glock mags or um, the little steel lips on those, you will eat that polymer up quick, fast, in a hurry. Much less aggressive grip angle right here, which a lot of us like. You've got that amazing sandpaper texture and they put it everywhere. Love it when manufacturers do that. Shadow Systems did a great job with that. Uh, the only logo you're going to have on the grip area is going to be the Made in the USA right there by Shadow Systems. And you're going to have the Shadow Systems logo right here. So very sleek. You do have their own version of the mag release. It's pretty good. It's got those good serrations going on right there. Plenty to get onto. They work just great. Real slick double undercut right there so you can get high up in there with both hands. Help control that recoil impulse. Coming up the back right there, you can see we have a nicely extended beaver tail. Nice and wide, gonna get a good amount of that flesh up in there again to help you control recoil impulse. One of the best things about the shadow systems is these ledges right here. And it's got that same sandpaper texture. So as you're in your grip, you can get your thumb in there, put some pressure on it and really mitigate the impulse of that recoil as that slides kind of bashing back and forth doing its thing. You got your pick rail up here and it is a single slot pick rail and it is the is the regular size but i would have liked to have seen a couple of different size options there but that's just me i mean let me know down below what you think would you want more than one slot because some manufacturers lights are different sizes but you're going to get at least that one slot uh factory style slide release right there although it is a little bit further out i know it's real tough to make out but it's it's much further more pronounced than say on like my factory gen 3 gen 4s so on the opposite side you're going to have the warrior poet logo right there very cleanly done uh, and then you have the war poet right inside and then you have the 9x sorry 9x 19 right there across the top sorry i jumped that focus on you so everything was very cleanly done on here, which is nice. So going up into the slide, you'll see one of the cool things is kind of how they've shelved off the rear right there. So instead of being flat, it's kind of at an angle. And you got all those serrations, not only on the rear sight, but on that back plate as well. So should there be bright light or sun behind you, it's not gonna glare into your eye. Moving forward from there, we have great serrations, both front and rear, plenty to get onto, very deep, goes all up cross into the top of that slide. So you can work this thing from the front, from the back, from the top, whatever you're into, you can work it. Obviously the hollow sun is on there. If you wanna see the specs on that, I've got a video on that. I've got a video on that MR920 as well. That thing's slick if you wanna check that out. I'll leave those linked down below. You got some nice depressions, slide work, some windows in there. And then of course that threaded barrel, which has those nice flutes in it as well. All that stuff wearing in just fine just as we would expect as far as everything else goes on here the internal parts and everything are glock um, glock parts are going to work in this this is a gen 4 clone those sights they are night vision darked out rear and of course that high vis front right there huge fan of black and colored in the front and that is a night capable sight as well well actually let's do some trigger pulls here and see what this is pulling at. So they say this is like four and a half to five. It feels right about in that area, depending on where you get a hold of the trigger shoe here. So uh, 
That one pulled just a hair over four and a half, so about four pounds and probably 10 ounces. So we'll do three pulls, unless I get something weird or accidentally pull a messed up angle or something. But remember, I'm not a machine, I do my best here. Uh, that was a little lower on the trigger shoe, but that was four pounds and two ounces. We'll do one more. As long as we don't get something freaky, we'll call it the rule of odds here. Right there, about four pounds and two ounces again. Now I know someone's gonna say it, you pulled low. Well, yeah, I pulled low because that's where I want my finger, way down there to get the best leverage on the trigger. So those are all the good things that come with the DR920 and the Warpoet. So the Warpoet, you're gonna get some logos and you get the different barrel and the hollow sun. So it's a little bit different and normally, you would get a trigger that has, sorry for the glare, with a red trigger shoe safety on it right there. But there's a reason that this whole trigger bar and trigger housing group isn't in here. And that's one of the things we're gonna talk about, along with the cost, the performance. Did I have any problems, which you might already be thinking I did. So let's talk about that. But as you can see, that is a ton of good stuff from Shadow Systems right out of the box. But let's talk about that problem that I ran into. So out on the range, the first couple times I went out and used it, the first couple pulls of that trigger, mm, like that, the angles and everything felt great, but I noticed something really weird as I pulled through those first couple breaks, and it just felt like there was a ton of extra grit and weight to that trigger. Continued to run like a banshee throughout the day, but when I got home and did my cleaning and inspection, I noticed this. Now what you're looking at here is it appears that the trigger bar was a little out of spec or maybe the trigger housing group is a little out of spec and the trigger bar actually sheared off the right rear portion of the drop safe ledge on the trigger housing group. Now I have never seen anything like that happen in a, a kit or an actual factory Glock. I've seen problems in factory Glocks, but I thought that was pretty interesting. So I took a picture of that and I immediately reached out to Shadow Systems which kind of gave me an experience with their customer service, quality control, all of that good stuff. So I reached out to them, sent their uh, customer service an email, sent that picture in and said, hey, this seems to have happened in the first 100 rounds. Uh, and they do say there's a break-in period, <laughs> but obviously that's not normal for a break-in period. Uh, immediate response the next day, and they shipped out a complete new trigger housing group and everything, which is over here in a bag. But uh, the only difference was instead of the red kind of trigger shoe safety, this one is all black and like the regular shadow systems. Um, I, since I have been back to the range and this one is performing absolutely flawlessly and it didn't have that issue. So one of the things to pay attention to is Glock has cut off almost everybody um, from buying their parts. So people are not really able to get the factory trigger bars anymore in large parts. Some people are, some people are not. And if you haven't noticed, a lot of the trigger bars out there right now are aftermarket. So I don't know exactly which one they used on that initial one. It appears to be a factory bar, but something was just a little out of spec. However, they took care of everything, no problems, took it back out to the range, ran it like a champ again. Which leads us right into talking about the performance of this thing. Because let's face it, this draws its lineage from Glocks, Gen 4 specifically, but has all of the performance and expectations that people wanted at a Glock that you never seem to get out of a Glock without spending hundreds and hundreds of extra dollars on work and parts. So the performance was absolutely outstanding. Same experience here as I had with that MR920. With that war poet right there, remember, if you've got a pocket full of shells for that, you should have a pocket full of trauma kit. This one is the LTC pocket trauma kit. Never go to the range, outdoors, or anything where you could get injured without a trauma kit. Link in the description below, check these guys out. Ran like a champ out there. Now they do say there is a break-in period. I did run into one failure to feed. Pretty sure it was due to me flubbing a reload. So you be the judge. I'll let you take a look at it right here. Ah! I'm not even gonna finish it. Whoa. Whoa. What's that? Oh, let's get that on there. Had a little uh, little failure to feed, but I kind of flubbed the reload. So we'll see if that happens again. So as you can see there, I was not on point on that reload, probably sent that round a little forward, and then I just jammed that mag up in there and it had a failure to feed. That was the only failure to feed or issue I had at all, minus the trigger bar, but like I said, it kept running. 
So the break-in period, maybe, I don't know. Anytime I get something new, I do a deep cleaning on it and then I lubricate that more than once and I clean it and lubricate it again because I don't know how long things have been in storage. I don't know what kind of process materials are still left on them. And the one thing I will say is that seems to help things right off the bat. Now, as far as the overall feel of this thing, it is absolutely outstanding. They have fixed everything I don't like about Glock. From a more narrow angle, a lighter angle on the grip, no Glock hump, factory magwell, good controls right out of the box. It is not an extended control, but it's a little bit more outward than the factory Glock one, but this is a factory style slide release right there. Trigger is great. Ledges on the side here, absolutely great. All the slide work you want, threaded barrel if you want to run a comp or cool guy suppressor stuff going on. They just gave me everything I wanted out of a, I guess, Glock lineage style pistol. Now, when it comes to the Warpoet DR920 specifically, like I said, what you see is what you get minus the light. Now let's talk about that cost. So I found this on sale at Sportsman's Guide for $11.49 or like $11.59, I think it was. Um, if you're a club member over there, picked it up, had it shipped in, did all the regular things. Um, talking about that price, this is something you have to want. But think about it this way. Say you buy a factory Gen 4, Gen 5 Glock MOS, and you do what this thing has. You do the grip work, you do the texture, you do slide work, you do barrel, you do trigger, you do optic. You're going to have more money in that than flat out buying the MR920, DR920 with the optic, the Warpo, whichever one. Um, if you're getting quality work and quality parts, it's going to cost you more money. The question is, how bad do you want the shadow systems or the war poet or anything else? So that being said, am I happy I spent 1150 bucks on it? Yes, and I'm happy I got the full size version as well. Unfortunately, I liked the MR920 Elite so much that my buddy let me borrow. I'm probably gonna end up buying one of those two and ditch a couple of my factory Glocks because they're just not doing it for me. And by buying the MR920, I mean the new X version because if you haven't seen my Glock 45 videos, that's my favorite thing that Glock offers, not my favorite pistol, but they're gonna give us what Glock did in the 45. Full size grip, a little bit of a shorter slide, and that's what I really like because for me, that makes an all around carry piece. Um, I don't have to worry about that slide length in an appendix holster. Um, I get a 19 length slide, but I get that full size grip for all the capacity rounds. Plus it works with all of my current mags, you know, my all 17 size mags, which is awesome because I don't really have a lot of Glock 19 mags and I don't wanna buy any because I like full size ones better. Now, as always, the decision is always gonna be yours. Do you wanna buy it out the box, kind of rigged up, raced up, maybe a little Gucci, but mostly for good tactical purpose? Or do you wanna spend the time personalizing, customizing, and you know, doing it your way like Burger King? That's all gonna be up to you. But for $11.59 or even I think the $12.59 that that was the regular price on this over there with the optic and everything, that's pretty unbeatable for the package you are getting. And like I said, I liked my buddies enough that I bought this and I like this enough that I'm going to buy the new X version. Um, so it just kind of depends on what money you have to work with. But if you're in the market and you've got that kind of budget or you're going to put that kind of money into something, this is definitely not one to skip. You might wanna check into it, get your hands on it because test drives are always gonna give you the butt in seat feel that you're gonna need to make that final decision. Well, that's what I've got for you all today. I hope you guys liked seeing that war poet. The thing is just absolutely sick on the range. If you guys are interested in anything you saw here, I will leave the link down below for the build list. You can check all that out. If you want to support the channel in any way, you can check out the Patreon. Huge thank you to all of my Patreons. You can get signed up over there. You can check out any of those links below, the affiliate links or all that good stuff. Helps out the channel and I do appreciate it all. You guys get out there, have some fun, enjoy some range time. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you guys on the next one.